I'd like to introduce our ranger who's going to present this program this morning. I think it was back in December, he started sending me emails saying I want to come to Vicksburg. Kim Hyatt, I work at Bryce Canyon National Park in southern Utah. My great-great-grandfather, George Theodore Hyatt, who lived in Illinois, joined uh, the Union Army in Chicago and was uh, assigned to the 127th Illinois Volunteer Infantry. What we're going to talk about today is, in general, the assault that took place on the 22nd, but specifically about the Forlorn Hope. The term Forlorn Hope is kind of an interesting term. It actually comes from a Dutch term, Forlorn Hope. And what that meant was not Forlorn Hope, but Lost Hope, or Lost Troop. You put the front rank a few paces ahead of your second and third ranks, and let them take the first volley. And those who volunteer for that front rank are the lost troop or the lost hope because they're going to disappear. General Sherman's plan was very simple. 150 men would carry planks and ladders to attack the fort. They'd be a vanguard and be supported by two regiments who would be immediately in their rear. Sherman sends out a call for volunteers. When Sergeant Hyatt was told you'll have to order others to volunteer, he said, I won't do such a thing, I won't order anyone on so perilous an assignment, but I will volunteer. Stock Avery Dan, as you can see, is directly in front of us on the graveyard road. Imagine this road quite a bit deeper and maybe half its width as it would have been 150 years ago. On the morning of the 22nd, the guns have been firing since 5 o'clock to soften the defenses. Now this is supposed to happen this morning at 10 o'clock along the entire front, all the way from McPherson's Corps to McClernand's Corps and including Sherman's Corps here. And this is probably about the point where you realize that of all those blue coats who are supposed to surge forward with you, you're the only ones moving. Now the casualties start to come fast. The man at your right probably goes down, maybe the one at your left. You have to jump over bodies in front of you. This is the Stockade Redan. Theodore and a number of others, perhaps no more than 15 or 20, have got to the top of the wall and are pinned down by fire going from both directions. And they lie there the entire day. As night fell, the men on top of the wall and those here on the flanks realize this is their chance to escape. It's going to be their only chance, and they quietly leave the position on the wall and head back down the way they came. General Grant's planned assault has failed across the entire front. From what I've been able to gather, General Ewing then presented what's left of his flag to the survivors, and they took remnants of it to send home for souvenirs. So on Sunday, Theodore composed this short letter home. Enclosed, you will find some shreds of our flag, which we planted on the fort and, and defended for an entire day and brought up the remnants at night. Keep them, for I shall be glad to see them again to remind of the fearful scenes of Friday the 22nd day of May, 1863. Yours, Theodore. 